Section 9.8, second row diatomic molecules. So we've looked at the molecular orbital theory with um, sigma um, s's, but now we have to be able to turn pi atomic orbitals into uh, molecular orbitals. So you'll see that the, the p orbitals are configured in three directions. You have an x direction, a y direction, and a z direction. The the um, x direction will, the z direction in this case are going to be end on. So, uh, so if these two overlap, it's essentially a sigma bond. And so we're going to call that sigma, that's what that is, sigma 2p and sigma star 2p. So you have the, ant the bonding here where they're in between and the antibonding where there's nothing in between. And that's essentially a sigma. Anything that's going to overlap where, where you end up with kind of this, where there's overlap on this side, and oh, I'm a terrible drawer, and this side, where it's, where it's um, up and down or sideways, are going to give you pi. So you have pi 2p and then pi star 2p. And then um, the other way, pi 2p and pi star 2p. So you have the p going in the in the x direction and the p going in the y direction, those will be degenerate. Those will have the same energy. The sigmas will have slightly different energy. Okay, so now we've got the we've got the energy diagram here. You can see that the sigma the two s the ones that are forming two s orbitals coming in are going to make a sigma 2s and a sigma star 2s, so the, the bonding and the antibonding orbitals. Then the p's are going to be in three, direction, three directions, so the ones that are going to be end-to-end, -end, the ones that are coming into each other like this, okay, that's forming a bond there, that's just a sigma bond, it's a single bond. So it's going to have the lowest energy, so sigma 2p, and then its highest energy will be its opposite, the sigma star 2p. Then the other two are the de degenerates. Those are the ones that are going to be like this. I can never draw that. Okay, sharing on the sides or uh, sideways, sharing on the sides, sideways, like that. So the, these two will be left over here and be called pi 2p's. So the ones end to end will be sigma 2p's, and then the leftovers will be pi 2p's. So then, so you're going to have sigma 2p's uh, lower energy, pi 2p's next energy, pi, pi star 2p's top energy, and then the sigma star 2p's. So almost opposite of each other. Pretty, pretty straightforward and, and not too hard to memorize. But just so that uh, you would have a headache, uh, what happens is that there are some interactions between the sigmas or from, from the S subshell and the P subshell. So if you have a molecular orbital uh, here or a, an atomic orbital where you have an, an S and then and it's making a sigma bond with say one of the P's and you have another P coming up in this direction, it is close enough that it's possible to make some bothers. Like it bothers it just a little bit energy wise. So in the, case of, in the case of the three lower elements, boron, um, carbon, nitrogen, you're going to see that the sigma 2p is actually higher in energy than the other two pi bonds. So, is it, so it messes up your diagram in the first three. The rest of them are normal. Um, it's no big headache. I'm not going to make you do it anyway. Just, just, just an anno annoyance. Uh, there's just one of the energy things that are flipped. So you can see here, in this case, you've got. Uh, let's let's take over here oxygen, fluorine, neon. This is what you would n normally expect. You're going to have 2s or sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, then sigma 2p. And then you're going to go up into the, the pi 2p, the pi star 2p, and the pi, uh, the sigma star 2p. Okay, just like that original diagram we showed you. The first three flip. So these guys will flip. So you're going to have the pi 2p fill first, and then the sigma 2p, and then their antibonding ones later. 
So if you're going to have, say, boron, you'll have you'll have one S2. We've already, that's inside. You don't worry about here. Two S2 is full. Then the antibonding 2S is full, and then the other two will be the the pi. So you fill one, then you fill the next. Okay. Now carbon, when carbon enters, there's going to be two more electrons, so they're going to go here, and so now it's full. Okay, when you get to, uh, to nitrogen, you have two more, and so now it's full. Okay, so you're up to the sigma 2p. So then once you get over uh, to, so this is flipped backwards. You can see that these, these two are flip of each other, so they're going to fill in different, in different ways. And that does determine uh, properties. Like paramagnetism is something to where there's an attract, it's an attraction to magnets. So it's like, why is a magnet stick to steel but not to aluminum? It has to do with this that you can see in the molecular orbitals. So paramagnetic is drawn towards a magnet. Diamagnetic is going to be pull away a little bit from a magnet. Okay, so you can see here you've got an odd number of electrons, they're not paired off, and that odd number of electrons makes it magnetic. So boron is slightly magnetic. You can see the same with the oxygen, because you have oxygen, these are not paired, and so oxygen is also going to be paramagnetic. So even though it's a gas, if you were to make it really, really cold, say make liquid oxygen, which is, you know, way below zero, and put it between a strong magnet, that liquid oxygen would hover there between the, the magnet because it's drawn to a magnet. So magnetism, color, a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these physical traits of matter, like why is something green, why is something silver, uh, a lot of those things can be described um, by where these electrons are, whether they're paired, whether they're not, how much energy do they have. All of this will, will contribute to the properties that these atoms will exhibit.